ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Um, I hope everyone's well out there. Uh, this is a very, very special episode of the PowerCast because today we are going to be recapping Power Ghost Season 3, Episode 10. The title of the episode is Divided We Stand. And this is the Season 3 finale. And wow, a lot, a lot happened in that episode that we, that we have to talk about. But before we do that, let me introduce these lovely people here. So we have Mr. Richard Bailey Jr. How are you doing, Richard? Doing good, Gary. What's up, listeners and viewers? What's up, indeed? And we also have Miss Dana Abercrombie. How are you today, Dana? I am doing very well. I'm excited to talk about this uh, show of a show. Yeah, and I'm sure everyone out there is excited, you know, that um, we can finally talk about everything, you know. Uh, now everything's out there. It's the finale. We know there were leaks, um, and, yeah, it was, it was very hard to talk about those leaks, but, you know, we kept our mouth shut, and now we can lay it all out. So today you're going to get our raw, you know, thoughts and feelings about uh, this finale. We have had some time to process it, you know, because... I'll tell you how I felt after I first watched it. And then, you know, it, it might be a, a little different. Well, no, it's not that much different to how I feel now, but like it's just the emotions were higher when I first watched it, watched it. But um, but yeah, there is some some uh, there's a lot to discuss uh with this finale. Um there's people out there I see that loved it. Uh, there's a lot of people who have mixed reactions and there's people, you know, speculating things. Um, and, and this season does leave a lot of speculation open, which is great, I guess. It gets people talking. But yeah, we're, we're going to deep dive into it. But before we do that, friendly reminder to the people, if you do love this content, please do hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Also hit the bell icon, you know, um, and... Also, um, uh, what's the other thing? Oh, yeah, leave your comments. Let us know what you think. Um, you know, you can react to certain theories that we have, or you can just say your own theories or respond to a question, wherever you like. You know, So, yeah, hit, uh, leave your comments, too. I can't wait to see what the people have to say this week. So, with that being said, we're going to jump right into our takeaways now. Um, and this is, you know, where we just, we each give our own take on what we saw and what we feel about it and everything like that. And this week it is Dana's turn to go first. So Dana, I know you have four pages of notes. So like, please hit us with your takeaways <laughs> because I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Go ahead. So dissertation, chapter one. Divided we stand. No, I'm joking. Um, I'm going to kind of do what you did. We talk about my initial reaction at first, because what we do is we get these in advance. And therefore, we're able to like marinate and sit with our thoughts. Um, so coming right off of episode nine, where we reintroduce Tommy, you know, I don't know about y'all. Like I stated before in the previous discussion, very excited. Tommy is a fan favorite, no matter how questionable the writing is, Tommy at his core is a fan favorite. And so for me seeing him back again, I was very excited. I had mixed emotions because it's like, why are we relying on past characters? Have you written yourself into a hole? Have you written yourself into a circle? What's going on? And so <clears throat> for this episode, you know, again, very excited. Who bopped uh, Tariq in the head? I was wondering. And there was a moment where I was like, well, you know, maybe it was too bit. Maybe it was uh, came from, from the dead. I don't know. The ghost of ghost came back and the spirit just knocked him over. I don't know. But I was very excited to get these answers. And, and of course, it ended up being Tasha. That was a wee bit. It was so obvious to the point that I missed it because I'm so used to throwing out these wild theories of who was who they're going to bring back that I completely missed it. Tasha is literally standing right behind him. Um, and so we lead into that conversation of, you know, we're family, let's dead this. And <clears throat> my immediate reaction was like, oh, this is corny. Just because me, I like chaos and I like conflict. 
But if you look at the trajectory of where Tommy is going in force, you would see that he is trying to find peace in his life. He's trying to find that new chapter. And again, this is where we're coming to uh, kind of like a, a bit of a opposing sides with me because I like my, again, I'm mowing you down with my gun proctor, Tommy. But I understand you cannot always be that 24 seven because then where does the character go? With that, I mean, you just, you need something to develop the character. So for him kind of having this conversation with Tasha and him being able to dead this whole situation, I can understand for the growth of the character, you need forgiveness, you need, upset, you need acceptance. And then also as a writer, this seems to me a plot that they're going to use to kind of carry over to how they did the finale with this war situation with Monique, uh, Monet, sorry. And in terms of, he does not have any allies. Remember, you have no, no allies, you don't have any crew, you don't have anyone who can really depend on you. And to be fair, Braden, he's, he's just one person. You need something more than that. And so I think that they did this and they set this all up to have that ally situation when it comes to Tariq and this war. Um, also, bringing back Tasha into the fold. It's welcoming to see because I'm, I don't want to just see her sitting up there in the woods with Yaz and Grandma all day. I, I do miss Tasha being back in action. But at the same time, my fear is don't give us what we already had before. You took these characters and you put them away so that you can grow Tariq and he can have his own situations that he falls into and his own trappings. My fear is that we end up repeating that support system that we had in previous seasons and original force, I mean, original power. So I overall felt kind of iffy about this episode in terms of me not saying, oh, this was amazing, this, this, and this happened, or this really sucked because none of this happened. I'm right at the middle because I don't know where you're going with this. And it just feels like, are you bringing people back to just repeat what we already had before? I don't know. So overall for me, this was interesting. Obviously this is a finale and we're getting more seasons. So not every chapter is going to be closed. So we still have what's going on with the Westons and their whole money situation. Uh, Monet did say she was coming back for more when they basically robbed them of the paintings, which was interesting because, you know, I don't know, as someone who is not a billionaire, I would just assume that you would take like your most valuable paintings, your Monets and your Picassos and maybe like have better security for them as opposed to just hanging them up on the wall. But then again, maybe you feel so privileged that, you know, no one would be brazen enough to come and try to rob me. So I'm going to just, here's my million dollar painting on the wall. Here's this, it's worth, you know, 50 million. So, and those are actually very expensive paintings, by the way, because I'm, I'm going to start ranting, I'm sorry. But I went to a museum and it was at the Sotheby's where it was auctioning them. And these are like stuff that's clearly 20 million, 50 million dollars. And I'm like, Picasso, it's not worth 20 million, but whatever. Yeah, I had a whole thing on Instagram and Twitter. I was like, oh, here's the price. I went on the tour with these white people. I wasn't supposed to be there. And I was like, oh, if you kick me off, I'm going to say racism. But they let me stay. It was very nice. I'm ranting. I'm sorry. Um, another thing that I really found interesting was the fact that Drew and Diana collaborated to get Monet out of the way. And I felt like finally Drew is being man enough, you know, he's finally doing something, technically not on his own, but he's finally doing something. And Diana always alluded to wanting that freedom from Monet from kind of the beginning. We've seen it and we it was very heavy handed delivered to us during this season. And we saw the manipulation with Monet. So for me as, as a viewer, you know, it's very easy to be on Diana's side with this whole situation. My thing is that I don't understand why, I understand why they didn't have Kane, but I feel that even if he was to put Kane into the fold and say, hey, you killed Tariq, 
I don't think he would really have a problem with that. I don't think that him and Tariq are at like reached that touching point where like, hey, I kind of care about you, little guy. I don't really see that. So by not telling Kane and instead, you know, making Kane wanting to go and, and kill Tariq, I I felt it was a little bit unnecessary because I, I feel like, you know, just in general, he always wanted to kill him. I could be wrong with this. Um, but I, I did think that the setup was interesting. And the fact that it was Tasha instead who did the shooting with, with, with Monet, I don't know about how you guys felt, but it felt like a little random, like a way to introduce Tasha back into the show. If you're in witness protection, and I understand that you're going to do whatever it is that you can to, to make sure your son is not injured, is not harmed, but you've been in witness protection for so long, your thing to come back is to randomly try to kill Monet. And then during the conversation that she had with Tariq, she pretended, you know, like it was just like she doesn't fully know what's going on. So it's just I'm going to just do this random shooting. Because even if he was to say, oh, you brought Tommy to my door, in a way you could say that was a blessing because you had that conversation with him. You hashed it all out. You're no longer trying to kill each other anymore. You understand? So to me, that's kind of like a blessing in disguise where you bought this man who was my sworn enemy and we came to an understanding and we're both family again. Because remember at the end, she said, no, we're family, you know, and she's saying, I just want to sit in the car, drive around town, smoke a blunt and tell you about all these things that's happening in my life. He's reaching out for someone and she's being stuck up in the woods. She's reaching out for someone too. So to me, it just kind of thought that, you know, thank you for this blessing in disguise, but I'm going to just start randomly like mow you down. That to me just sounded, it just felt a little bit random. Um, I think it was just this way to reintroduce her back into the fold and to give Tariq that support that I strongly would have preferred him not to have at this moment. I would have liked to see how he would got out of trouble on his own without his family. And the whole purpose to me was, I want to get back to my family. I don't want to put them in danger. I want to go up to, you know, and, and visit them and we can all live peacefully. But now she's back doing dangerous things in order to save you. So to me, it kind of felt selfish. Like, I understand you want your mom there. It just felt a little selfish to me to, to, to one, bring her back into the fold into this whole situation. Then Yaz, of course, you can also argue because of this, she could be a marked target as well. So is grandma. So logically, I'm on the fence with how they executed this. I'm happy to see Natori back. I think she's fabulous. I miss Queens with all my heart, but I'm just questioning this for a moment. Um, another thing that was really interesting was the disappearance of RSJ, and this kind of goes along with what we were saying previously, they introduced these really great characters, and then they disappear. RSJ disappeared. Noma disappeared for, like, more than half of this season. And it's like, I, you want me to be invested in you and, and who you are and you as a figurehead. But when you're gone and you're disappeared, I'm going to forget about you. I have a short attention span. So, and then just to make a throwaway comment, oh, he's gone. Must be nice when you have a private plane. I'm pretty sure that, that the private plane doesn't stop people. You know, if the government is trying to get after you, they're, they're going to get after you. But you, I, I just have that issue with introducing this dynamic character, black billionaire who could have been Tariq's mentor, who bought the building. Remember, he sold him that building that we just never revisited. Well, we became the, the warehouse thing, but still... I just felt that there could have been a partnership. It felt like it was leading towards a partnership. We got that with the whole Western Holdings. We understand that dynamic. But I just felt that there could have been something more there. And it never really developed. And by just having him up and disappeared, you know, and then Noma up and disappearing. 
And then it, sometimes it was Obi was like had gone for sometimes too. So I just kind of wish that you you had more stability with these characters in the show because they're really great. I really do like them. Another thing, goodbye, Lauren. I'm so happy you're gone. Please go with your friends, your family, rebuild a life. I understand Lauren's purpose, but seeing her go, I didn't really feel like, you know how you feel emotional about something? There really wasn't any emotion that I had towards this character. And I think I haven't really had her had that emotion since even in season one. You know, she was a character who was just really nice. She was there. She was supportive. And then she became annoying. And then she became annoying during this whole episode in this whole season too. And so to have her gone, bye. Like, I hope you do well in your life, but I don't, we don't have to pretend to know each other as Kane once said, we're good. We're good. And then also what's with the, the random butcher knives that she keeps bringing? It's cute, but like, what are you, what are you going to do with this? How did she hold it like this? Um, yeah. Um, another thing that was really interesting was Effie. And this is what I say, why, how I really don't care about Lauren and her story. But Effie really kind of impacted me. That whole goodbye scenario where, you know, she's like, oh, I think I thought we were even. And he's like, no, I can't trust you anymore. And you can actually feel the pain and hurt that she has. Where she kind of realizes she has no one. And she's back at not just square one, but it's a cycle of how her life has been. And she, she says, well, you know, I, I'll find my own way back. I always do. So I became really invested in her character because she, she's very strong mentally, physically, but you could see that she had like hope and opportunity and it was broken. I understand why Tariq is so upset at her. You cannot trust her and I understand why, but I just, it, in that moment, I really felt sympathetic towards the character. And then she, she just walked, she chose to be alone because she is alone and that's how she always has been. And so, I hope she, she does return for the next season because I really do like the tenacity of this character. And, and I want to see her make it and to be happy and to reach her number and to go to, to school. So I hope they just don't you know drop her and that's it. Um, another thing was really, um, I felt that overall, um, the whole, I don't know how to, Again, I kind of said that already. Jen, you know, I wonder where does Jen and the rest of them go from here? Because, you know, Zach's dead. She's moping. But, and I know that, you know, we, we kind of gave the synopsis for the next season. But I just kind of wonder where does Jen go? Is she now the, the kind of the Angela of the situation in terms of wanting to constantly get Tariq? Wasn't she, wasn't Angela the one who was constantly, no, that was Sax. Does she now replace Sax is what I mean by constantly wanting to get Tariq over and over and over again. And she's kind of like the, the, the overarching annoying nemesis of the show. So I wonder how that's going to come into play as well. So just overall, um, not to make this long and to keep monologuing, I thought that this was, was really interesting. I thought it was, you know, there were some things that I did not agree with. Um, I really liked the the kind of Kane and how he broke down each and every car every person in order to say, this is why you're not going to do this and this and this, and this is why we work together as a team. When he said, um, Drew, man up, you're not going to be NBA housewife. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, Diana, stop pretending you're a, sor a sorority trick and that we're drug dealers. That's the family business. And so... He's really taking that leadership that Drew always said he said he was he was gonna be, but again, he he just seems to be all of words, and then every time when he tries to do an action, he screws it up. So I really like the initiative that Kane all is taking, and then overall, I wonder for next season, are we gonna be in school anymore? Because this doesn't because remember how it, it 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 ended with saying you know you can't do both. You can't be student and drug dealer. You have to set one path and one goal. So I wonder, does that also include the Tejadas as well? And so what will they do? And also, this is why I advocate for the death of Monet, because I want to see what these kids are going to do without her. You have no mom. You have no dad. What? You have no allies. You killed the other ones. 
the other family. So what's going to happen now in in their storyline if you don't have the support that you used to that you used to relying on? So this was interesting. I really like this. And, you know, with Effie, there's a lot of things that I want to see, but I just don't know how they're going to convey it. And then also, Ion uh, Covington, who is the daughter of Monet, I wonder if they're going to introduce her into the show now because they gave her a full name. They gave her a background to NYU. This is still in New York City. So how will she come into the fold with this? And the fact that everyone's at war and Effie joined um, Monet now. Not yet. Effie joined Monet. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm screwing up names. Effie joined Noma. I wonder if the daughter is going to be fully protected, if they're still going to be able to find her. Because remember, they moved her again. So there's a lot of different things that's, that's at play that I think could make for an exciting season four. And I wonder if it's going to bleed into force. I don't know. We'll see. Wow, yeah. Um, great analysis right there. You touched on a lot of things, you know, uh, specifically that I was, that I had questions about and that I was wondering. So great job there. Um, yeah, I, I made note of a few things you said because I definitely want to bring them up later during our uh, questions and discussions. But I'll say this, you're, you're absolutely right about RSJ. I feel like that character was kind of like wasted a little bit now. Like he, he's a cool character, don't get me wrong, but it's like, is his purpose only to, you know, mess with Lucas uh, Weston? Like, is that the only purpose for him? Like, go ahead, Rich. I just want to make a comment. I also agree 100% with what you said, Dana, about that because the last time we saw RSJ, he's telling Tariq, I want my money back. So all of a sudden, the character disappears in the next episode. See, it doesn't make any kind of sense. Uh, and maybe it's a scene. Right. Maybe he filmed more scenes and they cut it from the actual show. But it just doesn't make any kind of sense. But yeah, you know what his purpose is? He's going to be like 2-Bit, where he's in the first season of of uh, you know Ghost. And then he doesn't show up again until, the, until uh, a later season. So maybe we'll see RSJ after season four, you know, maybe. <laughs> and then also really quickly, I they touched upon something that I, I, I always like is when they incorporate the name of the show and they give it meaning. Um, at the very end, when he was still, when Tariq was talking to Tasha, he said, I just need money, that power, that power that makes you untouchable. So I really liked how when they talk about the, the title and it gives it meaning. And it, it sets a goal for the show overall and also for the next season. So I did like that. Um, but I'm just still really baffled by Tasha's motives because, you know, Tommy said not to go after her. There's no one you could trust. You know, I'm pretty sure Tommy, he said, I'm not in it. I'm in New York. I'm not in New York City. Remember, I'm already dead. Don't blow my cover. So you cannot rely on me. So I'm just really baffled by what's going on. Why are you here? And if it is to bleed into force, why are you here? Like, are you, is this to incorporate Tommy's brother and then the, the, the uncle? Because Tommy can't come back to New York. I just, I'm very just confused unless this was like a therapy session. I don't know. No, yeah, that, that, that's that's what it was. It was therapy, you know, um, but I'll, I'll have more to say about that in a sec. Uh, I'm, I'm going to pass over to uh, uh, Mr. Richard Bailey Jr. And uh, let's hear what he has to say about this episode, because I can't wait to see what he says. So take it away, Rich. So first and foremost, uh, excellent takeaways by Dana, as always. Uh, I'm also going to start off with my initial reaction. You know, when I first saw this episode, I had some very mixed thoughts about it. And then right before we started recording today, I saw the episode again. And I have to say now, I completely disliked this season finale of Ghost. Now, I have a couple of reasons why. But let me start off by saying this. OK, in my personal opinion, this season's the, the season finale achieved the goal that Courtney Kemp wanted it to achieve in the sense that 
we finally now are rooting for Tariq and Braden to be successful in whatever they are doing. Because now Tariq is going up against everybody, the Tejadas, Effie, et cetera. All of these characters that they built up throughout the seasons, I personally don't care about what happens to any of them now. Because in my opinion, when we go into season four, it should be about Tariq getting revenge on each and every one of those characters. And that's pretty much it. So I kind of feel like they have written themselves into a wall. But don't worry. I'm going to explain why I feel, why I feel this way. But I think it is smart because when Michael Rainey Jr. signed up to do this show, he asked the question, who was going to watch a show about a character that no one likes? And that was what was fascinating about it because Courtney kept found a way to create this show and yet she found a way to make us care about Tariq, understand things from his perspective. So I have to give her props on that, but that is exactly what this finale did because by the end, I don't know one person, obviously I, I want to see how everybody reacts to the episode, but by the end of this season, I don't know one person that's going to tell me, oh yes, I'm still rooting for Kane. I'm still rooting for the Tejadas. I will ask that question. I will ask him that question. Why? Because Tariq is the star of the show, right? Tariq and Brayden, this is the new Ghost and Tommy. So these are the characters they want you to root for. So that's that's what I feel the goal was. But let me get into my quick takeaways of the episode. Let's start off with Tommy and Tasha in this episode. Now, obviously, they Tommy and Tasha had a heart to heart to kill the blood blood feud. I agree with what Dana said that that made sense because we know that Tommy has a family of his own now with his brother and his uh, nephew. So uh, you, may have to, you may have to mute yourself, um, Dana. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I didn't have any problems with that. I do think it was kind of convenient and fast that they came to that resolution because what I said last week when we did this show is that I felt episode nine, that could have been the season finale because it left me as a viewer with so many questions as to what's going to happen next. And then when I actually saw what happened next, I was a bit disappointed with how they handle certain things. But overall, I'm okay with Tommy and Tasha making up. But I, d I definitely feel because Tasha got involved in this now, once again, they have written themselves into a corner because I kind of feel like this ends with Tasha getting killed. Either Tasha or Yaz or grandmother, as Dana alluded to, probably is going to get taken out next season. And then that's going to lead to Tommy having to get involved because now the family is once again aligned. So I'm very curious to see what happens, but I, I kind of feel that that's too predictable. So I want to see what are they going to do to change that story in a different direction. But we'll see what happens. But we did see that Tommy did try to stop Tariq. And again, as you both alluded to, he said yes. This isn't his war, so he can't get involved, but he told Tariq to be smart about his decisions and rethink this whole strategy without he's going to take down Monet, which obviously he didn't really think it through all the way in this episode, but he started to think about it, but not a wise decision. I'll get into that soon. But yeah, Tasha does take it upon herself to retaliate and go and shoot Monet. And of course, Diana and Drew had this master plan to basically get Tariq involved and say that he is the one that shot. Now, Diana did mention that she saw that Tariq couldn't have been the shooter. It was somebody else, but she hasn't put two and two together that it is actually Tasha. So this is why I say when they find out Tasha was involved, uh, Tasha's going to be in, in a lot of trouble. Um, and one, let me just make one comment before I go to my next takeaway. I just want to say the security on this show is, is complete garbage. Because how the hell is Tasha able to escape, you know, protection, get a car, drive, and then do all this other stuff? And then it, I just, it doesn't make sense to me. Somebody needs to explain to me. For the same reason that Lauren was able to meet with Tariq all this time, and there absolutely is nobody there to actually make sure she's not able to do any of this stuff. So security is horrible in this show. I just want to give them a shout out because they, they need help on that in season four. Okay, moving on to takeaway number two. Uh, I want to talk about the, the Tejada family. As I mentioned earlier, I don't really care about the Tejada family now because I like the fact that they spend all this time over every season basically showing us why we should care about these characters. We get an idea of their, you know, their human nature, their personalities, which I'm totally fine with. But by the end of this episode, I didn't care about any of the characters. Uh, I saw Monet finally met, met up with Noma. 
And even that interaction was very underwhelming because Noma, as we saw earlier in the season, she wanted to know what happened to Mecca. So she finds out what happened to Mecca. Oh, well, no big deal. And then Monet says, let's work together. Now, Monet's power play to basically make sure that she's still in control and take over the kid, take over, you know, watch over her kids and make sure that they're still working under her. That made sense, right? But still, I kind of feel like because everything happened in this episode, it kind of feels like it was rushed to that conclusion because they needed to get to a resolution. So I didn't like that. I felt that could have been played out a little bit longer had she had other interactions with Noma throughout the season. But Noma was nowhere to be found for most of the season. So it is what it is. All right. Uh, which is fine. It is what it is. Um, we did see that uh, Monet, that Monet did, did threaten Tariq. She told him that she need that he needs to make sure Effie and Lauren don't talk. And the one thing that Tariq does have, he does have Obi as an inside man. So I will be very curious to see if that comes into play once again going into the next season. Because the one thing that Gary did say in the past is that Obi, it felt like he had something in him that we saw in the earlier seasons where he had an independent streak as well. And I'm glad that at least Tariq had him as an ally. So we'll see what, what, where, where all that goes. But the main issue I had with the Tejada family in this episode, and this really is my personal opinion. I don't expect everybody to feel the same way. It feels to me like this entire season, it was a journey of Cain trying to become a leader, trying to basically step up for his father, Lorenzo, who wanted him to lead the family. And then when it all came down, as an opportune time to lead everybody. At the very end of this season, we see that Cain is nothing more than a yes man. Wait a minute, let me let me rephrase that. Yes, mom, I will do whatever you say. I will work with you. I will help you in any capacity. That's how I felt because up until this point, this character, he has the ability that they can easily turn on Monet. It's three of them. They can easily turn on Monet, take her out, but obviously, they don't want to do that because I know the RICO investigation, all this other stuff that's looming in the background. But I just I, I, by the end of this, it just felt like Cain, instead of being a leader, he's he's still taking orders from his mom. And I kind of feel like that's a horrible payoff to the character because I wanted to see him get power. Now, we saw earlier in this season when he had some power over Lorenzo that he was foolish with how he had that power. So I'm fine with that, right? But now that Lorenzo was gone, and you know that Lorenzo wanted you to step up and lead the family, now you're pretty much just Monet is the leader of the family. It's not Kane. So that's why I have an issue with that. But again, I know it's a complicated relationship, right? This is families have complicated relationships. So that's why I say everybody is entitled to their own opinion. But I just don't like how they did Kane up until the end of this, this last episode because I like the character. I want the character to stand on his own two feet. And, and again, now that you have Drew and Diana, you're basically saying that they are smarter than Kane because they came up with this whole plan to take out Tariq. And because you know he doesn't like Tariq, I mean, that makes sense, right? Because they're doing exactly what Monet did to try to take out Lorenzo by getting Gordo involved. But still, I just I feel like Kane is a smarter person than this. But when it comes to Tariq, he has an issue with Tariq. So let's use this as his weakness to basically take him out of the picture. So I don't really know what their plan is as far as because obviously the plan didn't work in this episode. So I want to see what happens moving forward if there are further issues within that family. But I also don't care because they're all enemies now. Tariq is the one that we're supposed to be rooting for. So I don't care what happens to them. But I do look forward to seeing how Tariq intends to take out all of these people going into season four because obviously him and Brayden they're going to need some assistance. Maybe they're going to Chicago. Who knows where they're going? But they're going to definitely need some assistance to basically get things going. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, and the last point that I will mention is, um, yeah, all the stuff with the Westons. You did see that, uh, you know, you know, Tariq, earlier in this episode, Tariq did confront Kate because he wanted to get answers about what happened with Tommy, where he took Tasha. And I'm glad that you know, Tariq and Tommy had that moment together because that was a good conversation that I think needed to be had. But, you know, all of this planning of Monet is the one that gave Kate the uh, the letter when really it was Diana dressed up in a wig. 
you you see the plan un unveiled. I mean, I wasn't really, I wasn't really, I didn't really think that plan was that spectacular. I mean, it made sense, right? Because they had to tell you that Diana and Drew were smarter than everybody else and they wanted to get revenge. This is how they did it. So I'm fine with that. I just kind of feel like the execution is, it is, it is what it is. But to answer the question that was made earlier about, you know, Tariq's trust fund is gone. So Tariq is not going back to school. He's, he basically is in the street now, somewhere with Braden, trying to figure out how they're going to do what they do next. But the last point that I will make is we did see that Kiki, you know, she knows, obviously she knows that Braden has something to do with Lucas, right? They had their little conversation that she told him that I'm going back to Ohio now because I have to get away from this from a for a while. So when they had the whole moment of them basically coming to when they reveal that what what, what basically uh they you know when, when when Tariq shows up at the end of the episode and they basically tell him, you know, Effie tells Tariq that she told Noma about the plan to take out the daughter. I was expecting Kiki to be the daughter or somebody else because it, it kind of feels like, you know, they basically introduce uh, uh, somebody who who is not on the show yet as an important character. And I just kind of feel like there was no payoff on that. So I was a little confused. I know when we spoke about it before, we thought that Effie was going to come out and say, oh, when she showed up, oh, that's the daughter. But no, obviously that's not her daughter. But I was just a little taken aback by that. But um, I guess we'll see what their plan is for that because uh, they are going to definitely touch upon that in season four. So stay tuned for that. The final comment that I will make, though, when I mentioned earlier that uh, Tariq, Tariq was, it was recommended that Tariq rethinks this whole war with Monet. And when I said that Tariq did think about it a little bit, but he obviously is not really smart enough to really think of things through everything. I just want to make this comment and say, I actually side with Effie going over to the enemy because Tariq is just, what was he thinking that he was going to take the intel that Effie gave him on Noma's daughter and try to basically say, okay, now I don't need you. I'm going to use this information to get us all free. That's a maneuver that Ghost would do, where somebody has intel, you take the intel, and now oh, I'm going to be the one to present it. You know, you, you can do your own thing on the side. I'm going to be the one to present it. Basically, Effie is the one that did all the work to find out this is a loophole as to how we can get to Noma. And yet Tariq doesn't think to himself, you know, maybe I should give her the opportunity to for us to work together, make this, this is something that she decided was her idea. So why don't I to stand by her side and, 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 you know, support her in that, but he didn't. And I, and I also didn't understand how when Tariq went to the jail, he didn't bother telling Effie, well, now Monet is in charge. He didn't tell her nothing about what was happening with all that stuff, that, that conversation that Monet had with Noma at the beginning of the episode. And now the fact that Monet is the one that's in charge. So I didn't understand any of that. But uh, again, uh, this is power. It's meant to be entertaining. It doesn't mean that everything is going to be a logical decision. So I get that. But with all that said, I look forward to seeing what happens in season four. But I personally feel as though it's very obvious what's going to happen in season four in some regards. Because if it's a war, there has to be casualties in a war. That means that Tasha can die. That means Yaz can die or the grandmother can die. And 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 I do, and I personally feel it is going to be Tasha because then that creates more of the situation of his sister and his grandmother. Now, once again, they have a negative perception of Tariq. We have never seen his sister have a negative perception of him. So that's why I kind of feel like Tasha probably is going to get killed. And that's going to start this whole cycle of, well, now the family doesn't really, they don't really like the fact that he, that he, what his actions led to all of this. But again, we'll see what happens. But yeah, overall, that's my thoughts on the season finale. I can't wait to hear what uh, Gary has to say, and I can't wait to hear what everybody in the comments has to say as well. <laughs> oh, no, uh, th those were excellent takeaways. I, I don't even know if I can top that. You know, what, what you two <laughs> what you two did, I don't, I don't think I can top that at all. Uh, I, th I think, you know, people are going to be mad at me for, for the stuff I said. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, th those, those are great takeaways, great analysis um and yeah i i agree with a lot of of what richard just said but um we'll have more of a dialogue about that in a sec so i'll, I'll just go ahead 
and give my takeaways and then you know we can get to the discussion um it, it's going to be very brief because you know you guys have really like kind of just said everything i wanted to say already so but okay so let me begin with this so throughout this whole season you know um i mean they presented monet as the new big bad you know the, the new big evil the villain um she was you know the main reason the, the main motivation for them even selling drugs this season you know they had to sell drugs for her um and you know her and obi were kind of you know they they were looked at as like these big bad characters you know uh, that we should revere and, and be afraid of uh, we'll, what's up rich you mean noma you said monet oh yeah my bad my bad yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, Noma and and Obi. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Part of me. Um, they were looked at as these big bad characters that we had to revere. Um, and so, like, my thing is, like, throughout the whole season, right? Noma's whole position, her whole stance with Tariq was like, okay, you, you're selling drugs for me. I want my money. Blah 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 blah. But she she was also when she first came in, she was also very uh, upset about the situation with Mecca. And she made it clear that she wanted to know who took out Mecca. And she, in, in I believe it was in episode five, she reiterated this, you know, to Tariq. She asked him if there's, if there's been any news or any, you know, anything about Mecca's death that came out. Now, so my whole thing is in this episode, when we finally see Monet and Noma come face to face like you know I was expecting a lot more for this first uh encounter between these two characters because it's like they were kind of building up to a confrontation of some sort or some kind of conflict because we know that Monet is the one that killed Mecca um so I thought you know that's where we were heading to but instead it was it was basically two 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 boss ladies, you know, just piecing it up and like, yeah, like we run this basically, you know. And there's nothing wrong with that. I love to see that, you know. I love to see that power is doing so much with the female cast. You know, they're not just pushing them to the side and letting it just be a a, a man's show, you know, a man's world or whatever. Um, and you know, I, I I do enjoy having you know all these wonderful uh, female characters, but I just feel like this it, like i was just a little disappointed with this first encounter i feel like we could have got more from it um i feel like the tension between them was resolved very quickly um you know and monet was just kind of nonchalant about everything she was just like oh i don't care about mecca i don't care about the ring you keep it you know um and then when when noma finally like no, when when she basically owns up to the fact that she did kill Mecca to 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 uh protect Zeke or whatever, or well to revenge Zeke or whatever. Um, no, sorry, to save Zeke, right? When she finally reveals that, it's like Noma's just like, okay, whatever, and then she punishes Obi for it, you know. It's like, and then they piece it up. So it's like, you know, I, I was just expecting a lot more. I mean. I don't have a problem with the fact that they have now teamed up. I don't have a problem with that. I just have a problem with how it was executed because it could have gone a different way, I feel like. Um, so that's, you know, that's 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 my critique with that. Uh, second takeaway. So we have to talk about Tommy and Tasha now. Uh, and it's kind of a similar situation now. First, firstly, let me just say I do enjoy that. We are getting so many like characters from the power law uh return because you know it wasn't just tommy and tasha we got uh tommy's mother she came back you know pars came back um so yeah we're seeing a lot of people from the power universe the power history uh resurface and that and that's great to see um but as far as you know the the tommy and tasha situation now they they left on such a cliffhanger in episode eight you know um with how things happened at the end i mean that was a big surprise already and, and that's why you know me and rich feel like that should have just been the finale because that would have kept people buzzing for like a whole year pretty much 
Um, but, you know, when we get to this episode and, you know, it, it kicks off with Tariq, you know, at the hospital, he's recovering and everything. And he's he's got his mind set on on a getting revenge with Tommy and Monet because he believes, you know, those two are responsible. Um, and, you know, he goes to Tommy's mother's house, kicks up a fuss and, you know, she uh, she protects Tommy, of course, like a mother would. Um, but then, you know, when we finally get the, the confrontation, the, well, when we finally get the two characters on the screen together, it's another situation where I feel like it's resolved too quickly. Now, once again, I don't have a problem with the fact that Tommy and Tasha squashed it. I feel like that's a great direction for the future. I just feel like it was done a little too quickly, especially considering the intense situation they was in. Like, you know, they had guns drawn. Tommy had just like, he had just busted in there and, and gunned down two US Marshals, you know, like the Punisher. And Tariq came in, he snuck in, he held up his gun. Like it was a, it was a very intense situation. Like. Um, somebody could have died very easily. Now, of course, we see Tasha knocked him out to save him, you know, to, to get him to safety, basically. Um, and, of course, Tommy sees this and he's like, why, why did you do that? You know, like, you had to drop on me. So, okay, I understand emotions are high. I understand that um, Tommy Egan, he might want to piece it up because he has a family now, but it's like, why did you go there so aggressively in the first place? Like, you know, you could have, you, you could have like uh, went about things in a completely different way if, you know, if you wasn't feeling like you wanted to kill her right now kind of thing. Like, you know, you could have just went there like, all right, I need to get closure. I'm not going to, you know, kill anybody. I'm just going to, you know, try and, uh, try and get a moment with Tasha. I'm going to try and get sneak her out the house and talk to her or something. Like if, 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 if closure was what you wanted, you know, that's, you could have did something like that. It's just the way they go up to that. And then they, all they did was like squash the beef and it just happened so quickly. Like in a split second, it, it was, it was a little disappointing. I'm not going to lie. Um, Cause I wanted there to be more of uh, a conflict first, a conflict resolution. But I just felt like it happened just a little too quickly for my liking. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, it does feel very obvious now that it was Tasha who knocked out Tariq. You know, obviously we were thinking different things last week, you know, um, or whenever we saw it, you know, we were thinking, who, who did that? Was it 2-Bit? Was it, you know, Ghost? Was it, uh, you know, somebody Tommy brought with him, you know? We, we were running wild with speculation, but it makes sense that Tasha did it to protect Tariq because, and especially because that's a theme that we see throughout this episode where she wants to keep him safe and everything still. Um, so, you know, once again, I'm not mad that they have squashed the beef. I'm just, you know, a little disappointed with how it came about. But I do think this is great for the future, for the future direction of the show that they are now on good terms. Um, and then, you know, of course, uh, Tommy tries to warn Tariq to, to not go to war with Monet and stuff like that. And then Tariq even kind of asks him, you know, oh, are you going to help me out? You know, if, if I do this, are you going to help me? And Tommy's like, you know, this is, this is not my war. This is your war. And, you know, technically I'm dead in New York. And then, you know, he rides off into the sunset going back to force, you know? So... I mean, it was cool to have, you know, it was cool to borrow Tommy a little bit because like Dana said, he is a fan favorite character. Even if we wasn't that high on season one of Force, he is still like one of the best characters in this universe, like hands down. So it was great to see him in these past two episodes and it definitely got us excited for season two of Force. It is a shame that now we got to wait like, you know, months. To, to, to see what they do with all of that. But hey, you know, it's a break for us. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's my take on the whole Tommy uh, Tasha thing. Um, I do have a bit more to say about Tasha and I'll get into that in this next takeaway. So, um, so you know, it seems like 
the lead up to season three of uh, Power Book Two Ghost is basically Tariq versus the Tahadas at this. Yeah, they're teasing this big war, uh, this whole like it because basically there's a whole faction now. You know, you have a whole faction of Noma, the Tahada children, and you know, uh, Effie now has um turned on Tariq also and she's joined forces with them. And you know, Monet is down for the count at the moment. Um, she's not dead, I do believe she she's gonna come back. Um but yeah, so the whole setup is, you know, Tariq and Brayden, they're in this together, they're brothers, they're ride or die. And it seems like, you know, now they're going to have to, 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 to go and regroup and come up with a strategy, I guess, to uh, face off against Noma and the Tahadas and Effie. So that seems to be the theme that they're going into. So my my thoughts on that is I just hope that they have this very well planned out um, because with how they've built this up now, I don't want I don't want it to, to be like a soap opera where it's like, you know, somehow they end up working with each other again and being friends and being cool around each other like no, like we need to see Tariq kill someone at this point. Like what, what they built up in this episode, like Tariq has to, like the, the season three has to start with Tariq clapping something, you know, like, um, and another small critique I have is that Tariq is starting to feel a little too passive for my liking as the main character. Like, <laughs> he, like don't get me wrong, He's, he's more likable than he's ever been, you know, as a character, I, I think. Like Michael Rainey Jr., is doing, he's doing a great job with, with Tariq's evolution as a character. But I just feel like this, this season he's been too passive. He's, he hasn't been in the driving seat. You know, it's not Michael Rainey Jr.'s fault. It's just how, how it's currently written and stuff. But... Yeah, I, I just feel like he isn't doing enough. He isn't getting those moments that he should be getting as the main character. And an example of that is, you know, what Dana was talking about with Tasha, you know, being the one to shoot at Monet. Uh, that was a little random, um, you know, especially with Tasha's situation where she's supposed to be in witness protection um so you know it's it's a bit kind of you know she shouldn't be doing that now i understand she wants to protect Tariq, and she doesn't want him to be mixed up in all this you know stuff with the tahados but like dana said she was acting a little confused when they talked by the waterfront there like she didn't really know what was happening so it's like how are you shooting people up and you don't even know the whole story it's like you know and I, I just feel like that should have been Tariq's moment. I feel like Tariq was robbed of a powerful moment as, as the main character there. I feel like he should have gone through with the plan and actually shot at Monet. Uh, but what's up, Rich? You were going to say something? I was going to say, yeah, I think the point that, that you made as well as Dana, it, it was very selfish because Tasha is not thinking about what could happen as a result of this. Obviously, she probably think Monet is dead. But clearly, Monet is not dead. So, and Kane came out and was shooting the vehicle as well. So it's it's going to backfire badly. But we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like she was trying to protect Tariq, but she made things worse essentially. You know, because Monet is not dead, and I just feel like you know a a big game changing moment like that should have it should have been Tariq. You know, I feel like like. I, I get that we want, you know, to show that Tasha's back, you know, um, she might she might even be a bigger part of the, the shows moving forward now. Because um, I feel like, I, I think her schedule's freed up now. I think one of the, the other shows she was on, they stopped it now, right? I think it's canceled. So she might actually end up being a regular on power again. So I get that maybe they wanted to show that and tease it or whatever, but I just feel like, you know, at this point, is this is this a Tariq show or is it like just everyone? You know, is it the Tahadas? Like, 
I just I just feel like we the front man needs to be doing more. He he needs to have more of these powerful moments, pun intended, you know, in the show. And that that moment with Monet should have been Tariq, in, in my opinion. So go ahead, Rich. Uh, I want Dana to go first, then I'm gonna go after you. Oh, yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. it just kind of goes back on the discussion that we had earlier this season. And I understand we're only in what is it, two, three? What are we in three? We're in three. So I think that I understand one and two where he was kind of still dependent on people and trying to figure out who he is. I feel that after this, he should have become his own person. Because remember, he has to make that decision. Tommy says, I'm not here. You cannot rely on me. So I felt that that right there would have been the moment when Tariq, this becomes the Tariq show. So, maybe for next season, like, I understand you had everyone back, but if that is the case, I don't want to see Tommy, I don't want to see Tasha, I don't want to see Grandma, I don't want to see Yaz, unless they're all getting murdered. I want him to make his decision, and whatever the consequences are, he's the one that, that has to make those changes. Uh, Brayden will always be his ride or die. And, you know, that's another Tommy. With that being said, I don't need any of the previous cast members because you already have Tommy 2.0. I don't need Tommy 1.0 and 2.0 conversing and having dinner together. So, and then this also comes into play. Remember earlier about the theme song? If he is truly going to be his own person, remember the whole thing about whether or not there should be a theme song? Should there be a clean break from his family because he realizes that his actions that he did now or not even his inaction or trusting into the wrong people because trusting in Diana and falling for that whole scenario and then blaming him, does this then separate him from them in terms of there's no more relying on them. This is an all out war. This, I'm looking after me and my people only. Everyone that he was with, you could say crossed him, aside from Brayton and Obi. So this should lay the foundation for you being your own man, your own choices, maybe your own theme song. But I don't know if that's going to be the case. And again, we have not seen season four. So we're just guesstimating that Tommy and, and Tasha and Grandma will be involved. But it's alluding to the fact that even if you don't have Tommy, because Tommy went back to Chicago, the mom is there. And like I stated, I don't want that same relationship that we've seen before. Because to me, it is hindering the growth of this character. And he already relied on people, even though he was kind of forced to. But we saw yeah. how terrible that backfired. Ha, 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 I didn't know that. That's funny, I didn't even know. No, um, he, he, he was forced to rely on people. And it should show you how you should not trust anyone. And when you have Effie and, and everyone else joining your team, and they all cross them. Now everyone wants him dead, right? So I truly want him to be more cautious with this whole scenario. Because it... You, there's no turning back. I don't see how the, anyone is going to turn back at this point. I'll be like, hey, we're buddies and friends. And we've seen it a countless times with the original ghost. But even if you was to argue with Tommy and, and Kane and, and Wichimaface, they have a history. All three of them have that history where they grew up together. So in, the, in that weird sense of family, they can fight, try to kill each other, and then come back and be super friends. It's annoying for me, but it's understandable more than you becoming super friends with Diana or Kane or Effie. You don't have that connection. You met them from school. Cool. That was a couple years ago. They're not your family family. You all were all using each other. Great. I want to see him break out and actually make some kind of, of name for himself with this. And to learn from his past. So I don't know. Richard, please go. I'm rambling. Oh, no. No, you're good. 
I just was going to say, uh, to answer Gary's question, I think it's a very simple, and this is why I say to me, in my mind, it's predictable. So I want them to go in a different direction. But I think, yes, this is to Tariq show officially with season four, because I personally feel the story with Tariq from this entire, from the, from the start of this show, he wants to get back with his family. You want to reunite with Tasha, Yaz, and grandma, and, you know, leave the game behind. But obviously, because of what happened in this episode and Tasha trying to take out Monet, I feel when Tasha gets killed, that will be the catalyst that will change Tariq for good. And now it's going to be really about him being the one to not just get revenge, but basically establish and do everything that he needs to do in order to be the one that's in control. So I feel like season four has told us with this episode, eventually because they made diana so suspicious about Tariq being the one that actually did the hit she's eventually going to find out oh yeah tasha is the one that did this and eventually tasha is going to get killed and maybe it'll be somebody like kane or maybe even monet that takes out tasha then that would set Tariq on the path to get, want to get revenge and take them out because but but again you know as as you said gary this is a they're probably going to take their time to establish this story. I don't know how fast they're going to move with that particular part about it. But I feel like once Tasha does get killed, that will be a life-altering change for Tariq, and that will set him on the path. Now he's going to become a totally different character. So I kind of see that coming. And I do agree that Brayden will always be his ride or die. But Brayden also is going to have some demons as well to contend with. Because like I said, Kiki knows that Braden killed Lucas. I kind of feel like that conversation was put in this show for a reason because that might be revisited at a later time. Also, one thing that we saw this entire season, you saw the tension between Braden and Kane as well as Effie because Effie didn't like that Braden didn't step up and kill Lauren. And of course, Kane always clowns Lauren. And you saw in this episode, the interactions that Kane was having with Braden, you know, when they had that conversation with Tariq about what are we going to do about Lauren? And then Kane pulls out the watch, joking about the fact that he stole that watch from Braden's family. I'm telling you, it's it, that. So they both are going to they definitely evolve, I think, in season four. And then they're going to have to do a lot more. You saw Braden taking shots at the family. Well, I would not be surprised if you see Braden having to be the one to help take out Effie or Kane next season. It, it kind of feels like it's headed in that direction. But uh, we'll see. But to answer the question, this is Tariq's show officially, I think, once Tasha is killed off. And again, we have to see what happens next season because he cannot rely on the trust fund. He doesn't have that money anymore. So he will not be going back to Western Hold. I mean, he will not be going back to school next season. So let's see what happens now that he has to be on the street and figure out this stuff for himself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, great thoughts. Um... Let, let, let's get back to that in a sec. I just had one more thing um, I wanted to say on on, on uh, my takeaway. So let me get to that, and then we'll get we'll get into uh, season four. So the last thing I wanted to say uh, was basically like I I want them to uh, like don't get me wrong. We we had some some great moments this season um, and some great little you know twists and turns, you know plot turns and stuff like. But this show moves at such a rapid pace. It's like, it's so quick the way things progress. Um, and, you know, I just want them to slow it down just a little bit and hone in on some of these moments and let us, like, let it breathe a little bit. Because, like, so many things happen with people changing their minds, the plan changes and alliances change and things like that. And I feel like we don't get the time to fully process these moments. Like it's just rapidly like changing and cycling. And I just want them to to maybe like maybe I think they had too many uh storylines going on in this season, and that's probably what uh caused this. Like it was a little hard to to manage them all at, at once because there was so many moving parts. But I I suggest that they kind of strip away some of the plot points just a little bit and slow things down and focus on specific moments a little more and just hone in on the moment because this is something i learned in in writing myself because um i like i've been writing some episodic material um you know the past couple of years like for podcasts and um 
and there's he's a, there's a published a author. <laughs> he's being really coy and humble. He's a published author. <laughs> yeah, that too. Uh, and yeah, there is uh, s- s- some other projects coming soon. But yeah, like I've had to learn to to like kind of slow things down and hone in on a moment because like in writing, people like to experience what's happening. Like they like to feel it. Like they want to hear the sounds. The, they they want to you know smell. They they want to know the smell. They want to know all of the senses. Like we need to immerse ourselves in in every moment. And but like I feel like in power right now it's jumping too too quickly like to each moment to where we don't fully get to like sit in it sit in the moments um, and that you know I felt like this uh, finale kind of really showed that a lot like it was just one thing to the next one thing I, and I understand they had a lot to get through but I feel like if if the other if the rest of the season was more slower paced out like they could have really built up to these moments a lot better um if they just took away certain things that that had no uh bearing on the finale anyway you know so that's uh, that's my final comment uh for the finale for, for, um, for me it's not about speed but it's more about efficiency in terms of adding certain characters and the follow through if RFJ and, and Noma were someone, you know, you're, you're fully committed to these characters, be fully committed. For me, the speed of the show is welcoming. And I don't know if you ever watched an Aaron Sorkin TV show or seen any of his movies, but it's like speed. And you have to like understand the language and the movement of that environment. And I feel that the streets, or least I allude to, is something that's fast and you own oh, no, people are always grasping for power. There's going to be someone who crosses you and there's another character who comes in and someone who you haven't even seen before. If you look at, you know, what everything kind of went down just in life in general. That's how it is. Um, and even if you look at, say, The Wire, things happen that people have never predicted before. Again, going back to Omar, because I'm always stuck with Omar. We never predicted that. You know, you build up for something and then boom, a side character comes in and changes the whole game. My problem with this is that I need there to be follow through. And also going with what you're saying, though, I need you to make me care and not you introduce these characters. I don't care about Noma and her daughter because she's not there. You know, she had an amazing introduction when she came and killed those two people for the ring. And I'm like, who is this woman? Oh my God, she has an exit. Oh, there's this big black man over here and he has an exit. Oh, we go to the UK. You know, but you didn't do anything with them. And now it kind of seems like Obi's crossing Noma just because of some green some green cards that Noma could technically have gotten. But you, you went through Tate? Like this one random person you all universally go through. And so my thing is just, Make me care. That's all. Because I, I don't know the directions of the, both the characters and, and the show. And it also kind of alludes to what you guys were saying previously. This does not feel like the Tariq show. He is a side character. We're really looking at Kane, and Kane is kind of way more developed. Monet is getting more screen time, and, you know, she's killing people. And what's really going on with Lorenzo and everything else and yet Tariq is just you know still running the streets and went out a car and then he got a car and then he lost the car gave it a two bit and then you know that's it like everything seems to be happening to Tariq because of these other characters as opposed to Tariq doing stuff to these other characters and I feel like you're just losing the plot and I know it's about power and everyone wanting power why am I following Tariq? Why are you here? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just say one one thing, and then uh, you you go, Rich. Um, but yeah, I I uh, I agree that um, you know they need to make us care more about these these certain things. And I just feel like the way that they can do that is like if you do just slow things down a little bit, that allows the actors to do more with the moments too. I feel like that that allows 
them to really like show the character a bit more because there's more time to like really you know put that oomph into it um and i think that's how you get people to care about what's happening more you know uh if it's if it's just not constantly jumping scene to scene to scene like before we process things so that that's all i'm saying but yeah i i agree with uh what you said i think we're saying the same things just in different ways as well a little bit but i also agree with what you're saying about the Tariq thing but, yeah um, we're saying the same rich. thing yeah definitely uh, but rich what was you gonna say maybe he's saying something different <laughs> no no I, I i i agree with both of you and i defer to you because you are the experienced writers on this panel i just wanted to make a comment and say don't worry about the follow-up because we are going to have an excellent follow up to RSJ because this season he was the richest black man in America. So next season he'll probably be the poorest black man in America and revert back to the Chris character from the wire, robbing people until he gets his hands on to reach. So <laughs> stay tuned for that in season four. <laughs> <laughs> so, so are you saying he's going back to the abandoned buildings now? Cause, cause you know, he's not going to be able to afford nothing else. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So, so happen with that character next season because i feel like they know what that actor brings to the table so it kind of feels like you got to do you got to do more with him as a character so stay tuned for that season four <laughs> yeah yeah i do i do want to see what the long-term play is with rsj but um yeah that, that that was the takeaways so let's let's get into some some questions we've already started to talk about um season four so, you know, we might as well go all the way with it right now. So uh, the first question I had, like, for you guys is, you know, so based on what we've seen now, um, what is your personal vision for season four? So, you know, what should it be? What do you expect to happen? How do you think Michael Ely is going to integrate into it? You know, uh, just 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 let us, just give it to us. You know, what what is your vision for, for season four? and how you feel it should go and what you think, you know, what are you expecting based on what happened in this episode um, for season four? Um, and, you know, you can talk a bit more about Tariq's role and how he comes into his own and you can talk about, you know, Effie, because uh, one of the things I'm thinking about is like, is, is she going to flip again? Like, is she going to turn back to Tariq? You know, is she going to be, you know, maybe uh, turn her back on the Tahadas and, and Monet and go back to Tariq, possibly, you know. So you can hit me with things like that. You can also bring up, is, is Lauren gone for good or will we see her again? You know, things like that. So what is your vision of what season four is going to be? So who, who wants to go first? Who, who has their, their thoughts fully collected right now? <laughs> and it looks like Dana is very eager to go. Are you ready, Dana? You want to go? Not particularly, because that's a really well thought out question. I will say that. Oh, oh, he wants to go. Yay. Okay, Richard wants to go. Go ahead, well, of, Okay, first, first and foremost, uh, Agent Young, I feel, is going to take on a much larger role in season four because you saw he got that flash drive at the end of the episode by his mom, Paz. And obviously, they're going to continue to tell you, oh, yeah, Sax had all this stuff that he he had to expose Tariq and the St. Patrick family, et cetera, et cetera. So I look forward to seeing him step up into the role and, and that he'll probably be the one to help Blanca and Jenny once again take a look at what's happening with the Tejadas, what's happening with Tariq. So stay tuned for that. As for the question about Lauren, I kind of feel like that interaction that Lauren had with Effie at the end, you know, in this episode, that wasn't, that didn't feel to me like it was a goodbye. It felt like it was a warning. Like she would definitely put her hands on her. She did, she did tell Effie, Tariq is playing you. And that's exactly what Effie learned. But it kind of feels like if they wanted to, they could revisit something with those two characters because she did say, I'm not the same girl you knew before. I'm, I'm a lot different now. So I would like to know what she meant when she said that. Uh, at the same time, I don't really care for her to return because this is about Tariq now and him dealing with the Tejadas and everybody else that turned on him. So she doesn't really need to return. I do want to say, though, I'm a bit surprised that after she did what they said 
after she she went on ahead and recanted her statement, I'm surprised that Monet didn't show up to that house and kill all of them. Because again, we know Monet is very obsessed. And again, she's still a loose end. You think just because she re she recanted her statement that that's not going to come up later and bite you in the behind. I think that's kind of ridiculous for them not to consider that option. So um, even though they had her the farewell shot, I don't know if she's gone for good. We have to wait and see what happens with that. As for Tommy and Brayden, it is very clear now they have, you know, they 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 can't go back to the lives that they had. You know, Braden is no longer attached to his family. Him and Tariq are on the run now, so to speak. So I, I do expect them to go to uh you know Chicago at some point next season because where else are they gonna go? You know, he he can't really hide out anywhere specifically. And and I would think that they're gonna come after them. Uh, but also the question is, you know, how much information do they know on Tasha and how can they find out where Tasha, Yaz, or any of the, uh, any of the other characters are at? You know, I, I kind of feel like that all comes into play as well, because I feel like if they're able to find Tasha, then that would lure Tariq out and they could get their hands on Tariq. So I want to see how all this comes together. Uh, as for Michael Ely joining the show, I like Dana's theory about him coming in because of the Dahlia drug finally making its way to New York City. I, I, I just don't know how they're going to do that, though, because they have to we have to consider what happens in four season two as well. And if that's going to connect to what happens in the next season of uh, of Ghosts. So we have to wait to see how that all plays out. But um, obviously, I'm very curious to see what his role is as far as coming into this. I also kind of feel like. You know, I mean, it's hard. It's hard to really determine too much. You know, but 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 I am going to say that I I do stand by my theory that I'm pretty sure that Tasha getting involved was not a good thing, and Tasha will probably you know die. You know, they always say when you're in this game, you either end up in jail or dead. So I kind of feel like Tasha already was in prison. She can definitely get killed, and that could reopen up a lot of things because they know that Tariq is going to want to get revenge. But I just don't, I kind of feel like it will be too easy for them to take that approach. So I want to see what are they going to do from a creative standpoint so that this is not a cliche type of way to handle the situation. So I'm very curious to see that. But what I will say is, hey, I'm looking forward to season four. Will will any other characters show up on this show? Perhaps two bit again? I don't know. Um, we just have to wait and see. But I'm definitely curious to see what happens with Tariq and Brayden. Because the way that that episode ended, these guys are on the run, all right? I don't know where the hell they're going to end up going. So, I mean, there are, I mean, it just, it's hard to really determine any of that. We have to see what happens with force. But I, I do imagine they are going to go to Chicago. And then that will be the catalyst to set things off, to give you an idea of what's going to happen with uh, Ghost. But we'll see what happens. But I am looking forward to it for sure. I, I will say that much. No, yeah, great, great points. I, I do, uh, I do think that um, there is going to be some integrating with with Force. I think you know, in the upcoming season of Force, we're, we're probably going to see the build up to Tommy coming to New York for this, the moment he had in Ghost, and then um, we'll probably see some some aftermath of that. And I believe that, like you said, it's totally possible that um, Tariq and Braden decide to go to you know Chicago uh whether Tasha comes to I don't know but I do think that's a strong possibility and based on uh some, some pictures I've seen floating around I feel like it that is possible we might even see some people turning up in Chicago looking for Tariq maybe um I think that's totally possible <laughs> so so here's the thing. I, I don't know what pictures you're alluding to. I did see a picture online of Michael E. Lay right directly yeah. across from Monet. Yeah, I don't I know. If, see, I don't know if that's I don't know if that was taken from season four. I, I don't know what that is, but it kind of looked like they were having a casual conversation. So that makes me wonder, is this guy going to be uh, a good guy or is he going to be a bad guy you see this is the stuff because we just saw the photo but i don't there's no context with just that photo but i don't know yeah yeah that's a good point uh we 
we'll, we'll come back to that later because yeah i saw that too you know my, michael ely uh but but there's something specifically i want to ask about monet so we'll we'll get to that in a little bit but but yeah um uh, I yeah I feel like we're, we're gonna see some other characters in force because I, I feel like stars is thinking is that because a lot of people weren't high on season one I think they kind of want to like you know they want to go wild with season two and and uh, get people watching it so that they can be you know their confidence in the show can can grow basically um so I feel like they're gonna you know use that playbook of having ghost characters in force just to kind of boost it up boost it up a bit i do think we might see some some other people from book two show up in force you know uh now i can describe the picture i saw it, it was a picture of uh woody mccain and the actor that plays diamond together um so you know there's there's there's, there's that so uh oh trouble <laughs> But yeah, who knows? Uh, but I, I, I love uh, your take on season four, uh, Richard. And yeah, um, we can talk a bit more about Michael Ely also in a little bit because, of course, he's going to have a big presence in in whatever season four is too. Um, and I have some ideas of the type of character he might be. But that that picture that you mentioned does kind of raise some some questions. But before we get to that, Dana, what what is your vision? of what season four should be, you know, how should it go? What are you expecting? Uh, what characters do you, do you think we'll see? You know, just, just last night. I, le yeah. I legit don't know. Because I, again, to be like the old raggedy lady, I don't want the characters of the past. Um, I think it would be best if we kill, kill off Tasha because in that way there's no more ties and, and the ass can go live with grandma. And then I wonder, I hope grandma doesn't die just in general, because, you know, she has got to be raised by someone. I'll kill them in the foster care. Um, so my thing would be, if Tasha does die, that, of course, would make Tariq even more enraged. And again, he would have to be his own person. And everything that you try to do in life ultimately failed because they died. And that, to me, is poetic. I like that. So Tasha can die. Um, also, I wonder, I wrote this down because now we have, I don't want there to be like a family thing with Tommy because he pretty much iterated, reiterated that, you know, I'm not here. I'm not a part of your war. And he told him, you know, just stick, just don't go so crazy, essentially. Think about your actions before you're doing it. Don't re react so harshly, which is really funny and shows the growth of Tommy because Tommy has always been a hothead and has always acted very irrational at times and, and is one of those people who gets very emotional and then he reacts and then he's like, oh my God, what did I do? And there has been deaths because of that. Um, so you really do get to see the growth of Tommy. Um, but, you know, it's really interesting here where I think in season four with the introduction of Michael Ealy's character, his wife died. His wife was murdered. And so I think that this is going to make him be one of those cops that's very aggressive, that does not do things by the book. That's not going to be corny and cheesy and whatever. And I think that he may end up working with, what was it, Paz's son? Um, because he seems to be like he's, he's taking on the case and they're giving him some screen time. So I really felt that he's going to have to work with him and there's going to be a lot of bumping heads. You know, Power is very much known for, for having their cops kind of bump heads. We've seen it throughout all of their, their shows, even with BMF. So that I, I see something happening. I just don't know how this ties in unless it becomes a situation where they, they, there's the war between, you know, the Tejadas and with Tariq and Brayden. And I don't even know who's going to be on the other side with Brayden. You guys talked about taking the, the photos with Monet and the other one and everyone being in Chicago. That could be the case. 
um, I hope that it's not for the. It's not going to be for the whole season because they filmed Power season four right outside my my the house. They shut down the whole street and everything, so they're not going to stay in Chicago. But if they do make those, hey, you visited our town, we're going to visit yours for like an episode or two, and then go back to New York City. I understand that, um, but just overall, I don't know what is going to happen. I. If with Monet out of commission, I wonder who are the Tahad is going to rely on in terms of if you want to build this war against Tariq, will you get more people on your side? And then how exactly would that connect to Chicago? I don't know. Because logically, you would think everyone in Chicago would be on Tariq's side. But again, they don't understand or fully know the dynamic between Tommy and Tariq in terms of uncle family because like Tommy tried to kill Tasha from an outsider. Oh, well, Tom, well, Tommy tried to kill your mother. Well, clearly he's not on your side. So I, I just don't know if they're going to be like, you know, Tommy, we want to join you and, and take out Tariq. I don't know. So this is one of the things that has got me really confused. Another thing I did want to say though, is with Effie, this show did a really good job with, you know, people can double cross each other just in general, when we had that with, with hiding information from each other, and then they, really, they reveal it later on. What if, for some strange reason, Effie is teamed with Monet as a way to help with Tariq, and that was all set up, and we just don't know that yet. Now she's working with Monet. She knows exactly where the daughter is located, what's really going on, and, and, and you know, so I wonder, if that was kind of like a maybe a red herring part to just throw us off and she's actually still on Tariq's side. So that that could have been helped right there. Um, but even with that and the daughter, you know, her life being in danger, does that mean Monet completely steps away or would that enrage her even more? I don't know. So with this season, if I was to kind of plot and plan things out, I would have, you know, Effie and Tariq still work with each other because, again, he needs somebody. He needs an ally. The show is really good for throwing out those red herring situations. Um, we need a way for him to be free of Monet, but he also still needs money. He lost everything. He lost his inheritance. He has nothing to fall back on. So, you know, I want him to become his own person now. This is what I wonder what's going to happen with Brayden. Because Braden essentially walked away from his family when he walked out the door and, you know, and it was really interesting how it showed that both the Weston and what Tariq and his family does is the same thing. But I think because one is white and one is black, it's viewed differently. You know, they're both stealing and, 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 and robbing and, you know, Ponzi scheming, but it's, it's, it's still different. I mean, you're doing bad things that hurt other people and the community when you, you look at it. And so it was really interesting how they showed, you know, Braden kind of realizing that he, in a way, his family is no different than Tariq and what he does. So does that make him feel like he's more emboldened to follow Tariq and that he knows, you know, um, the, the street, not necessarily the streets, but that lifestyle as well? Because remember, he was kind of wishy-washy at first. And now he seems like he's all in. And so with that break with his family, I wonder how does that change that dynamic? And how does that change the resources that Braden once had? Because his family has a lot of resources. You know, they're, they're not like regular people. They have money. They have power. Remember the whole senator situation that they touched upon, I think, last season with the whole blackface thing? So with that being said, I wonder, it would be interesting to see where Tariq, not Tariq, where Brayden ends up becoming and who, who does he transform to. Um, so that that's all I can really just say at this moment. I don't know what's going to happen. Noma, again, just because she's been gone for so long, I don't really care about her and that story between, I know that she and Monet is working, but Monet is out of commission. And then here's another thing. Is she out of commission? Until we see her into in season four, or is she gonna still be in the hospital or dead? 
That's it. We, we've seen so many times, you know, going back with BMF with member Lamar. Remember, we thought, oh, he's dead. And the next season, I'm alive. And, you know, and we do know that she's in critical condition. But I just wonder, is she going to be up and moving and mobile when we come on season four? You know, or is she going to still be in critical condition when that, that first episode drops? And I, I think with her being gone would be more impactful because like the kids, oh, my God, you know, she, he, really, she, he really killed our mother. So that's a narrative that they're going with. So it would just be more believable if she's, she's dead, dead at this point. So that's just kind of all I can say because I don't know what I would want to see for season four. Nope. Richard. Go ahead. I'm sorry. There are two quick things I just thought of that I want to mention. And oh, yeah, by the way, uh, excellent takeaways, Dana. Um, one thing that we are going to definitely see, and this is what my name alludes to, New York leads the way. We saw that Tate won that election. And then you saw that he had the conversation with Davis, and Davis said, well, hey, the Tejadas know that you was involved in shutting down Weston Holden, so you need, you and I, you need to do me a favor. You need to clear Diana Tejada's charges as well as mine. And you saw that Harper overheard this conversation, and then when the reporter came out, she told her, oh, she basically alluded to her that they're, they're, no, they're not, they're no longer, she's no longer his fiance. So that storyline we will see progress. I'm still a bit upset that we're not getting the influence show because I would have wanted to see what Tate, what Lorenz Tate could have did with his own show. Uh, obviously, it's good that it's on this show, but I, I wanted to see what they had in mind for that show. So, but I look forward to seeing what happens. We're gonna definitely see something on that. Um, and also, I was going to mention in regards to the Tejada family, they alluded to in this episode that Drew and Diana. They have this plan, right? They said Monet and Kane will never see it coming. So that kind of made me allude, made me think to the fact: Are we going to eventually see these, the both of these people go head to head in terms of Diana and Drew versus Kane and Monet? It feels like that was what the plan was because once they find out, once Kane finds out that they basically ordered this hit on Monet, that creates further issues. So I'm very curious to see how they handle that. But I want to reiterate what I said earlier is that ultimately I only care about Tariq getting revenge. So I want to see how they're going to make me want to care about what happens with those other characters. But hey, that's going to be fun to see how they put that together for sure. But yeah, those are the only two points I wanted to make. No, that that is an excellent point right there about um, Kane finding out that uh, Drew and Diana actually set up their hit. Like I do think that is a major thing that 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 can happen and give us some more to harder moments you know um and i do think we're due somebody like you know splitting away from the family completely like i think that should happen at some point where somebody completely just disowns the rest of the family and goes off on their own and, and kane seems a likely candidate for that but at the moment he does seem loyal to to monet so who knows but uh, Dana, you were going to say something? Oh. Sorry. Another thing that I was interesting, interested in about, interested in it. Oh, my Lord Jesus. Okay. So you know how Tariq doesn't have any money, right? And so he's been giving those daily or weekly or monthly contributions to Tate. You basically, to buy a silence on everything. With there being no money, I don't know how broke is broke because is he regular broke or is he rich broke? But can he still make those those donations? Because with that money not flowing in anymore, is is Tate's lips going to be looser? I wonder. Because Tate does hold a lot of secrets. Tate is slimy. And Tate will double, double cross you. And he doesn't, he doesn't care, essentially. That's why I love him. He doesn't care. So I wonder how that is going to impact. Also, going with the now ex-girlfriend, whose name I cannot remember. What was her name? Anyone? Harper. Harper. Going with Harper, who, you know, previously was a really good teacher, and now all of a sudden she's stuck up with, with dating all in her feelings. Um, I wonder, because she overheard everything, 
is she going to be kind of the jealous one and start leaking information to her friend who was a journalist who was investigating Weston Holdings? Or is she going to be like, you know, I'm done and completely walk away? Because her services, technically, are not needed anymore as a teacher. They're not good. They're, I do not understand or see how them being back in school. She was brought in as a teacher. She was also brought in as the love interest for Tate. Both are gone. So I wonder if she going to even be a thought in the next season. Or is she going to be in the background probably leaking information out to the reporter because she wants to be vindictive. Or she wants to give payback, not because of ending the relationship, because she's the morality police. So it would be really interesting to see her kind of team up with that journalist and be the morality police. But at the same time, I don't know. I just, I don't, I would, like, I would want her to be there. But at the same time, I understand if they get rid of her. But I just feel that her overhearing everything would be a bit more exciting other than I'm using this to break up with you. You know? I'm going to be the good one here, and, and I know that you've been paying off this and this and this, and, you know, American people, citizens, this is the guy who, you know, who you think he is, and then you elected, but who he is, who he really is, and then tank his whole campaign. Because she has that ultimate power. I wonder. No, oh, yeah, that, that that's a good point, um, you know, is, is Harper done now? Um, because, you know, it does seem like they might be focusing less on the school now um but yeah I, I think i think she should still be part of that because i'm i'm actually like very curious about tate's uh campaign victory like and how they're gonna add that to the story because that is a major thing now that he is a, a senator or wherever he ran for i don't know but um yeah that that's a big deal and and i wonder how they're gonna fit that into things because there's so many ways they can corrupt him or use him as a corruption point to kind of you know get what they want and they can show how things you know get corrupted from the inside and how it affects people um you know people's everyday lives so uh, i hope they that they do a lot with that tate storyline in the next season but go ahead rich um, Oh, no, go ahead, Dana. I'll go after you. No, I was going to just simply say that this is why I'm extremely upset that they took away influence. This could have easily been the black version of House of Cards. And, you, you know, give us that. I think we deserve it. We sat through force and we expected so much. And y'all delivered what y'all delivered. We deserve influence at this point. You know, and you can also just keep it in New York City as well. You don't have to go to D.C. Even though I would love to go to D.C. and explore that territory, but Ah, poor Lorenzo. Thoughts and prayers. Uh, I agree. And, and just to go to what Dana's comment that she made earlier when she said a Harper services are no longer needed. I, I'm just going to say that I will laugh if the writers and Courtney Kemp decide to hell with everything we did before. Now we're going to put all the kids back in school. You know, the season four premiere, you see Tariq in class next to Diana, even though they're enemies now. I would laugh if they just did that. But no, they can't do that because that's the type of writing that Vince McMahon would approve of and say, yeah, this is it. Because he, he can't remember anything that ever happens from week to week on his own show. So, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I hope they get away from like the soap opera approach. Like, you know, uh, one, one thing I liked about this season is they kind, well, there were some soap opera-ish moments, but like, you know, there were, they also surprised us a lot too and, and took things in different directions. So I want them to, to, to do that. But, but also like Dana said, please stick to, you know, the things like, please like focus on the aftermath of the, like give us these moments and then focus on what happens after. What is the consequence of these moments? You know, um, instead of just giving us the moments and then moving on and things go back to normal, you know, show us more consequence. That's my thing, but but go ahead, Dana, because I think you wanted to say something else. There, there is two things that I really want to bring up that's really interesting that I'm noticing here in my notes is the fact that Monet and Noma are a lot alike. And this is why I didn't have a problem with them trying to have a shoot off. Because if you look at it, 
Monet and Noma both kept their child a secret, right? No one knows where the daughter is. Nobody knew that Zeke was the son. And, but yet, I wonder if it's going to foreshadow uh, Monet's daughter. Because remember, she kept she, Mecca, not Mecca, Zeke was kept away from what was going on. But then he died as an innocent by Mecca's hand. So with this coming up with the daughter, if we do do season four and we do see the daughter, she was kept away. You know, she doesn't even know what her mother does. I wonder, they, they kill her off, the daughter. It's mirroring both sides and it's supposed to show, you know, no matter how secret or you separate, you try to keep those worlds, you cannot. And so I think that would be a really great kind of mirroring of both of them. And then also we've seen, you remember how we always get that innocent, someone dies who is not a part of the game. It keeps that going because the daughter is not a part of the game. So, yay. Also, was it just me? But when she, remember when they were all confronting Noma and everything? And then she, then all of a sudden you saw someone step forward and you saw that it was Effie for a moment. I thought that she was a daughter. Yeah. No? Was it just me? I, I thought oh, the same yay. because of the timing of how she was talking. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, it made sense, but they guess they said, no, we're not going in that direction. So, um, very mm -hmm. interesting. She like He like dropped the name and everything, and then she stepped forward. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, it's her. But no, it's not. So, um, another thing I wanted to bring up was the fact that we had the scene between Tariq and Tommy's mother, which I thought was lovely. Now, this was before Tasha came back and screwed up everything. But the scene between... Tommy's, Tommy's mother and him, he really needed that maternal figure. Even as messed up as she is, she really just sat down and listened to him. And they had a conversation. You know, he was originally angry, was going to go and shoot up the place looking for Tommy. But he just had that talk. And you can really see how he just needed guidance in that moment. Whether or not he was going to take that advice, he just needed to get it off his chest. And I really liked that scene that they had. They didn't have to have it, but they did. And it was really sweet. And at for a second, I thought he was going to kill her for like a mother for a mother situation. You know, Tommy tried to kill my mother. Where is she? So I'm going to kill you. But they didn't. And it was just nice. And it also just showed how screwed up everybody's family is. But at the end of the day, they still need each other. And he's still young enough to believe that because I don't. But the point is, I liked how they played on that. And I thought it was just really nice. And she was sober, I think, for like in that scene. So yay. Usually she has some kind of glass in her hand, some wine, something. Oh, cocaine. <laughs> but, <That too. laughs> yeah, I, 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 um, I remember that scene in the original power of, um, of Tommy and his mother hitting lines together on, on the table like snorting up the lines like that's an iconic moment but yeah <laughs> great thoughts so an another question i have um for the both of you and you we've kind of like touched on this a little bit but um so how soon do you think they will reintroduce monet like how soon is she gonna heal you know um is she going to heal i mean i i personally think she will i think you know uh, if you want my, I'll, I'll go first this time. Like, I don't think she is going to um, be down for too long. Like, I think this is going to be very much like, you know, in, in Raising Kanan, when at the end of season one, where Omar Epps was shot by Kanan. And then, you know, first episode, season two, he recovers. <laughs> you know, he, he's got a miracle cure and everything. I think they're going to go in that direction with Monet. I don't, I don't think she's going to be, you know, down for longer than the first episode. Um, and, you know, if, if not, then maybe the, the second episode she gets better. But I don't think she's going to be out too long, um, especially judging by that photo that Richard talked about with Michael Ely, where they're talking and stuff. She seems very fit in that episode, like she's recovered. Um, so, 
yeah, I, I, I don't think she's going to be out of the show for too long with this uh, shooting, you know, injury. I feel, I feel like it's going to be pretty quick before she's back, back in the mix of things. But, you know, the question for you two is how long do you think the shooting will affect her? Um, and, and is it going to affect her character mentally, maybe, or affect her decision making in any way? Like, what would you think the consequences are of her being shot also? So you can add that to it, too. So um, I'll go to you first this time, Dana. I mean, well, I went first, but I'll go to you next. I, I already stated that kill her off so that the so, children so really... can grow and I'm dead serious. I want no, her dead. Okay, so, okay, so what? Let, me, let me rephrase that. So, so that's what you want to happen, right? But do you think mm-hmm. that is going to happen? Like, do you think she's going to die? No, because they brought back the previous <laughs> character. No. Um, oh, God. It's just that so, Star sometimes has a history of bringing back characters who we thought are dead, and then, like, nothing happened to them. I want this to be, oh, what if this is a Lamar situation? Where? Remember, she's critically ill. We've seen her get shot up multiple times. We saw We can count the holes. She's holy. She's Swiss cheese. With that being said, there has to be some kind of complications, even if you are still alive. What if she? What if she's disabled? What if she ends up in a facility where she has to be cared for by a nurse? What is the state that she is in? She didn't get shot in the head. We do know that, but the body. You still need what is certain organs. So if she cannot fully function. That would be good, too. But I just don't know because, again, you have a history of shooting these characters and they'll be all right. You know, they'll limp one or two scenes and then the next scene, they're, they're good. I just want there to be consequences to the shooting. And if you're not dead, I want you to have some kind of something where, you know, this will deeply impact your life. And then, with that being said, I wonder how does that shape your judgment going forward? Are you a meaner person? Are you compassionate? Are you the same manipulative person that you've always been? Because she manipulated. I feel that she knew, what, not necessarily knew the extent of what was going on, but she can feel that her children were turning against her. And she pulled that manipulation thing with Diana again. You know, I just, I really love you. And, you know, I just don't know how to express it. Where is that coming from? And it it felt like it was empty. Like, it to me, it felt like it was grasping for some kind of hope and chance that I can change you over. Because I know that y'all really hate me. Y'all have told me this. You, you know, we got into fights. I'm scared that you may actually kill me. So I'm going to think for myself right now. And so I just wonder how that is going to change the dynamic of their relationship if she does live. And I wonder if she's going to see her children differently in that regards. But what I think is honest to God going to happen, she's going to be the same Monet. Give it one or two scenes and she'll go back to screaming and yelling and, you know, get in the car, dumb Diana. I'm tired of this. Family. So I don't I don't see her character evolving. Lo siento. I just don't. Yeah, like I, I want what you what you were talking about where, you know, it it actually affects her long term, like the shooting, like where she has PTSD and, you know, she's paranoid. She's got a gun on her all the time. She's sleeping with the gun. Like, you know, I, I want her to be affected by this. Like I want I want her to show that PTSD and that anxiety of behind being shot. And I want to see her recovery process, you know, and how it affects the family and stuff like that. Go ahead. <laughs> But again, we already got PTSD in the first season when she was so 
protective over the kids. Like, you know, where are you? I'm in the toilet, mom. What are you doing? Who's in it with you? Because she was so, it felt like paranoid that someone was coming after her kids. And then we found out much later that it was about seek. Um, but we got that paranoid from her. What happens if she's, if we don't get that? What happens if we get a regretful Monet? I don't even think that's humanly possible. But if there's a regretful Monet, I just, I just feel that a disability has a way of humbling her or could humble her. It has a way of humbling others. We have seen, and uh, this is a terrible comparison, but we have seen George Orwell. I think that's the wrong name I'm using, but we have seen this dude. He was like basically like a, a, a guy who really hated black people. And at the end of the day, he ended up becoming paralyzed and he be, ended up becoming so humble that he went to the black church and like apologized profusely and, and asked him to pray for him. And, and we just saw the change of character. It's a great movie, Gary Sinise. It's based on a true story. Point that I'm simply making because I'm getting way off track is the fact that we have seen injuries at time humble people. And I think that what Monet needs is to be humbled at this moment. And because if you look at it, she is such kind of, you could argue, a terrible character in terms of like, she is a terrible mom. She does not seem like someone I even want to be a friend to. She's a terrible friend. She kills her friend's husband. Really. So she just seems like an all around terrible person. So I would just like to see her humbled. So that's just all I'll say. Yeah. How, how about you, Rich? Uh, what's, what's your thoughts on this uh, with Monet? Like how, how, you know, how soon is she going to come back? And, and, you know, um, do you think she's going to be affected by the shooting? First and foremost, I just want to say, I really like uh, Dana and your take on this. Uh, but I have to, I hate to tell you guys, this is power. Uh, the star power of Mary J. Blige is something I think that they care about. So I expect Monet to be back to herself by the end of episode one or the start of episode two. Because in my opinion, because of the photo that you and I saw, Gary, and this is just my opinion, and I and I want to say this, I know people are not going to like this because this is a possibility, but we have to remember this is a soap opera. When we saw when I saw that photo of her and Michael Elay, Michael Elay was smiling in the photo. That kind of makes me think because Monet is a manipulative character, and because she is now in charge of all this operated operations with the with the drug business, she could be using Michael Elay to her advantage, basically to get intel to find out where Tasha is at or something to that effect. Because the thing is this: when she when she finds out that Tasha is the one that tried to kill her. There will be some type of retaliation. But I also say this because one thing that we said this entire season of power, Monet has had no love interests, right? And everybody was wondering, is Monet ever going to have a love interest? You saw when they had the whole conversation, when she had that conversation with Noma, and Noma asked her, did you ever love Mecca? She said no. She didn't love Lorenzo either. So this is what I'm saying is, Michael Elay coming to this show, obviously his, his role is as the guy that's going to shut all this stuff down, right? But he can be easily distracted by Monet, and she could be using him and, man, and manipulating him to get other intel to make sure she's also keeping everything that's happening with her business under wraps as well. So I kind of feel like that's a possible direction. They are going to play to the strength of Michael Elay as a good actor not just from the action standpoint, but also as the romantic love interest. So I kind of feel like that's a possibility of something we're going to see. I don't want to see that because I like the idea more of him being an enemy, but they have to find a way to make it a complicated thing, right? So I kind of feel like that's a possibility or something we're going to see. But to answer your question, Gary, Monet is not going to be down for long. And, as, and, and, and just because I know Dana made a comment about this earlier, uh, even though she got shot, that does not mean that she will all of a sudden become an excellent actress in season four. So we have to make that make that comment as well. But we'll see what happens. 
No, th th those are great points because, um, yeah, another thing I was going to say, you know, about Michael Ile as my final thought is that I I feel like he is going to be some kind of like crooked cop. Like he, like, like I, I believe we talked about this before, but like I believe he is going to be, you, you know, not all the way ethical as a, a police officer or law enforcement. I feel like he's going to play dirty and play both sides. And, and one uh, theory that I have is that the uh, uh, what's what's his name, Agent Young. I feel like he is going to uh, you know be paired up with Michael Ile, like Dana said. Um, and I I think that um, Agent Young is going to be more of like the white knight, and uh, Eli, Michael Ile is going to be like the the dirty player in the game. And I I think perhaps. Um, you know, that's that thing that Sachs gave sent for him. I, I feel like they're going to try and use that to, to take down, you know, the St. Patrick's and stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah, great, great, great points about Michael Ely, because if he is dirty, I could see him having some ties to Monet as well and perhaps developing some sort of friendship or alliance with her. So, yeah, that's that's a great point. Yeah, that I mean, I'm pretty sure I don't know if everybody has seen that image, but that that image gave me the vibes that there's something more with this relationship. It's not just you talking with somebody who was on the other side of the law. It, there could have been some could be some type of romantic chemistry or something going on with that. But we, we can't really see just from the photo. But I'm just saying the guy had a bit of a smirk on his face in the photo. Clearly, they're on friendly terms. So. We need to get some answers about what they're doing with all that. But I like that theory a lot, Gary. So let's see what happens. And yes, Agent Young definitely is going to play a role in this as well because he is also connected to the history of Angela, Paz, Ghost, uh, Tariq. So he's definitely going to be a part of this as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, uh, time is slipping away from us now. So, you know, um, we'll get to final thoughts. So, you know, now just, just lay it all out, you know, let us know what you thought of this finale, where you think the, the you know, season is going and what you think about the force tie-ins and like, just, just, just give us everything, like your final words, you know, think of, think of some things that we haven't talked about yet and just, you know, lay it on us right now. Um, that Michael Ely thing was going to be my, uh, Final thought, uh, let's see, do I have anything else here? I, I do want to say, I know we kind of touched on it a little. I do want uh, RSJ to, to return and I want him to play a bigger role now, you know, as a rich guy, he, you know, that gives him access to a lot of like, you know, key players. So I want to see him interacting with maybe, you know, some of the other characters like Davis McLean or Tate. Um, if you've been watching the, the, the news uh, very recently, there was a situation where uh, Praz from the Fugees was kind of uh, in, in legal trouble, like, you know, um, for, for, for fraud and, and stuff like that. So and, and he kind of um, snitched on the government a little bit, saying that he was an agent and stuff like that. Like, I would like them to do something like that, you know, perhaps with the RSJ and Tate side of things like where they connect and do some 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 dirty dealings and stuff like that and i would like to see how that influences everything going on in the streets as well so yeah i do i do want to see them do more of that character in the next season um and then also i want kane's motivations to be more clear i want i want the character to kind of stand on his own a little bit more because in season three it felt like he was it, he, this was going to be like his defining kind of season a little bit where his character kind of comes into his own. But then at the end, he sort of just aligned with Monet, you know, like, okay, I'm going to. And and the thing is with that, it's like, first he wanted to become the head of the family. Then he got close to his dad before his dad passed away. And then now, you know, instantly after his dad passed away, he's like, you know, sticking up for Monet and stuff, even though he knows that she was involved. Like he was like the first one to, to know, you know? Um, so it's like, he's a bit flippy floppy, but I do want to see him kind of come into his, 
come into his own and be a definitive key player in this series, you know, because he is a fan favorite at the moment. So um, I would love to see him stand out a little bit more in season four. Um, And what else? Um, Dana's theory about season four being Tasha's last season, her being getting taken out. That would be great to see, you know, just for, because it would put Tariq in a position where he is forced to step up and become the man that, you know, he has to be, uh, you know, if he, if he has no other, you know, both, both parents are gone, assumingly, you know, if, if that happens, then he is going to be forced to be like, you know, the key, uh, the head of the family, essentially, you know, he's going to have to make sure that, um, his sister is okay. And his grandmother, his grandmother's like, you know, she's not all the way stable and she's getting older. So he, he has to be that, that the head of that family now, if Tasha is gone. And I would like to see that just because I feel like Tariq needs to be the key player. He needs to be that now, like time has come. Um, so yeah, I do like Dana's theory on that. Uh, I feel like Force could possibly be about Tariq and Brayden finding more allies in war. And, you know, we might see the the actual transition of Dahlia coming to New York. You know, maybe they are the ones that kind of broker that because now that they're not directly working for Noma, they could, you know, use Dahlia as, as something to give them legs a little bit and give them some power so that they can actually fight against uh, Noma and, and the Tahadas. So, you know, that is something that would be interesting to see. Uh, and yeah, that, that's pretty much my final thoughts. Um, so I will go to uh, you first, Richard. What, what's your final thoughts? Uh, excellent final thoughts, Gary. Um, yeah, overall, I, 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 I stand by what I said about the episode, but I want to say I, I really enjoyed this conversation because it allowed me to look at different perspectives on what they were trying to achieve. And I'm definitely looking forward to season four. Obviously, we're not going to get that season until maybe next year, but uh, I look forward to it whenever it drops. And I am looking forward to Force uh, because I want to see how certain things are explained as far as from Tommy's perspective, if we ever see Tommy and Tariq have another conversation in that particular season. So definitely looking forward to it. But overall, I enjoyed covering this season of Ghost. I enjoyed seeing everybody leave their comments. Uh, in their theories, and I look forward to your comments and theories on this recap as well. But yeah, we enjoy talking with you all about the show, and we look forward to covering for us in September. But that's all I had to say for my final thoughts. Awesome. And yeah, Dana, it is your turn. Go ahead. Yeah, overall, the show has been exciting. Nothing is going to be perfect. I mean, it's very great. Um, but I feel like overall, your sound is uh, a little choppy at the moment. I'm not sure what happened. Okay, uh, am I Yeah, it, it seems to be like cutting out a little bit as you're talking. I don't know. What Did you change anything with your setup? No. Um, it could be uh, if, you, if you're using a headset, it could be the batteries. I don't know. Is that better? Oh yeah, that's better. Okay. That's better right yeah. There. Sorry, it was the volume. Okay. So as what I was saying was this. Oh, okay. She'll be back in a sec. You know, technical difficulties. You know, um, but yeah, I know she's gonna have some uh, interesting final theories for us. <laughs> when she does get back. <laughs> but um oh yeah i also wanted to tell the people oh here she is i'll wait uh she's just loading up here sorry okay Dream yard. there you go doesn't have an app you need an app okay <clears throat> so what i was saying is this overall i feel the show has been fun it has been exciting i've enjoyed these characters and i look forward to know what's what's going on <clears throat> Secondly, I just kind of feel that, you know, now is the time we're in season four to break free of the past. 
Uh, Tasha did say she's going back into witness protection. She's going to definitely need it. I pray that she actually gets the protection from the witness this time because she's gotten herself into so much trouble. And as you guys alluded to, they're just not there. They're basically like the, the star labs of security. They, no one exists. It's terrible. Um, so next season, season four, get some security. That it actually secures things. Um, I do feel, you know, again, this show is, is very exciting. Um, and I do look forward to see if they, you know, it's not even going to see an if. You guys already basically alluded to there being a crossover. Whether it be like an episode or multiple episodes, there's going to be a crossover. So it'll be fun to see how that will turn out. I mean, I'm never not happy to see Tommy. I just want him to have, you know, purpose to, to be involved with Tariq because he already said, no, I wash my hands of this situation. You have to make a decision. I'm dead. So I could understand and see that, you know, Tommy would give them Dahlia or pieces of Dahlia in order to rebuild something because he has nothing at this point. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's cool. Uh, just don't get so heavily involved. I just wonder how this war is going to, to pan out. And again, I do think that they have a, a, a mole or a rat or a rat animal, as they alluded to previously. Um, and also, I just look forward to knowing what is on that, that, that drive that Sachs gave Pa's son and how that comes into play. And then also on top of that, I don't know if Michael Ely's backstory, is it present in terms of his wife being murdered by two rival gangs? Is it now or did it happen in the past where it, you know, it already proceeded? And if it does happen now, does that mean that it involves the Tejadas and Tariq and them? Does that also involve Tommy? Oh, there was a Tommy spot a sighting. Let's go to Chicago and see what's going on. So there's a lot of things to, to wonder about. I look forward to what's going to happen with Force. I may be the only one that likes it, that the fact that it's in September. You know, there, it, let me explain, because people are like, why is it so long? Let me explain why it's happening in September. We have a writer's strike, and that writer's strike is not going anywhere at the moment. And then on top of that, we're going to have a SAG extra strike, which means all those actors that you like watching on your TV show are going to strike, followed by the DGA, IATC, and other companies and corporations because the studios are not budging with one money and also with AI protection. And it's a very serious situation where they can make commercials which say Richard in his likeness and his voice, selling, I don't know, the latest bags from Australia. Or they can put, you know, they can make whole AI generated movies without actual actors. They have now where they have their AI models. You guys heard of the AI rapper that backfired immensely, but it, and they terminated the contract, but, it, but they still created this. And so these people and these industries and these unions are very concerned about protecting their licenses and to make sure that they actually can pay rent because less than the 1% of Hollywood are actually those big millionaire stars where they're being paid $100 million for a movie. These are people who have to just pay basic Los Angeles rent. And honey, Los Angeles rent is should be illegal. It, it tops the thousands. It is more like we're looking at the upper five to 7,000 per month. And unless you're like, I don't know, the, the, the god of writing, you're not making that much. So this could last for a long time. With that being said, there's a point that I'm making is that from what I'm witnessing from just a review standpoint, we are getting nothing but reality shows. If you look at the headlines, it's, you know, writer's proof uh, summer lineups, writer proof this. It's reality shows. I have watched, for review, five cooking shows. Five cooking shows. I don't know how many times I can watch someone cook a, a salmon, but I am, I am done. Five cooking shows. There were dancing shows. There were bachelor shows. 
Now they ran out of ideas with The Bachelor, so it's going to be old Bachelor with, like, people in their 60s. So here's the thing. If the fall lineup is just reality shows, here come Force. That's a show show. Coming in September. It's already a highest rated because that's just how it, it's been from last season. But are you going to watch repeats of Wheel of Fortune and British Bake Off American Edition? Or are you going to go see what's going on with Force? Because that has actual actors. That, that's a storyline right there. So it's genius that it's being put in September. So I, I applaud you. I don't like waiting. But this, it could be a good thing. So congratulations to Stars for that decision. Very smart. So, yeah, that's why I approve. And overall, with this season, <clears throat> I just, <clears throat> so sorry. <clears throat> I just want to see more growth with the characters. And for me, at this moment, I still have hope for Effie. Effie did not turn. This is all part of a plan. And she's still, you know, riding with Tariq and everything is going to work out okay. They had that conversation probably off camera. And she's going to get in with, with Noma and double cross some people, hopefully. So this should be really fun. And, and season four, there's a lot that can happen because you could argue it's not that predictable anymore. We don't know what's going to happen. And we're out of school, which brings in another environment. We've been in school for three seasons. And there's no reason to turn back now. You know, Tommy said you can't do both. And poor Diana, her hopes and dreams is like completely diminished at this point. So I don't, I don't know. I don't see her returning at this moment. And then we'll see what happens with Tasha. But overall, I'm happy-ish and excited. Oh yeah, interesting uh, final thoughts there. Um, and yeah, the, the, the writer's strike is real, you know, um, definitely something that's probably going to be affecting our TV for the next year or so. And um, it affects yours um, in the UK. Oh yeah, it affects, affects everything, essentially. They're going to start, um, in, they're going to import actors, so it's going to be really weird. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, your it's, unions it's gonna... are different. Yeah, I, I do think, you know, as this AI thing blows up, there's going to be uh, issues everywhere. A lot of industries will have to reshuffle a little bit, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a, a, something that we deal with for a while. And and then, you know, season five of uh, Ghost is going to be completely AI generated. So um, let's, let's enjoy what we have right now, you know, while we still can. But um, <laughs> that is going to be it. Uh, that is, you know, the finale of Ghost. So we will be gone for a while. Uh, we will be doing some some reactions and uh, quick kind of episodes about like the trailer, the Force trailer. You know, when when there's uh, when I mean the the short one came out. There's a long one that's going to come out too. We'll definitely do some some trailer reactions for that. So look out for that in the future. But yeah, and and we you know we will talk about some other things we might do, but. Yeah, we will be back in September to cover uh, Force Season 2. And, you know, I very much look forward to it and seeing how it's going to turn out. I do think it's going to be a much better season than the first, especially, you know, since there's a the, the new showrunner who has the experience with power. So I'm excited to see what they do with it. And then I'm sure there's going to be a lot of cameos too. But, yeah, yeah. Um, that is it from us for now. Sadly, you know, this was a bit of a long episode. I, I know some people talked about the length, you know, um, these last two episodes were so big, like so much happened, like with Tommy coming back and Tasha, and you know, and then this is the finale and our finale episodes are always long. So, and you know, the thing to remember is this is long form content. You know, it's not just a quick kind of recap review. It's, it's a long form discussion. So that's why we spent so so much so, uh, so long doing it but i do want to give a big shout to you know all of the the supporters the people who do support us uh you know long term i can't wait to see all the comments and see what they thought of this finale and where they think the show is going i want to give a big shout to uh dj you know a 
kind of a, a new friend I made over here, you know, just from power and stuff. They reached out to us because they listened to the show. And, you know, we've been talking pretty regularly. So, and, and uh, yeah, he has a lot of interesting theories as well that kind of mirror some of the things we, we talk about. So big shouts to him. Um, and yeah, we will be back in September, but don't forget, we have a channel. We have three channels, actually. We have Coalition Gaming, we have the Coalition Entertainment, and this Coalition main channel. If you do enjoy, you know, um, content about movies, TV shows, video games, you know, um, things like that, then do subscribe to the channels and be on the lookout for more content, you know. Uh, they, we will be talking about more things that you love, more movies you love. You know, there will be reviews on this channel, on the entertainment channel. And, you know, for you gamers, hit the gaming channel too. But peace out to everyone. Peace and love. Take care of yourselves. I'll be reading the comments. I'll be replying to, to almost everyone since this is the finale. So, um, you know, I can't wait. So take care of yourselves, people, and we'll see you soon.